Welcome to another episode of Mitz TV by Bessa San Diego. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel down below. Also, check out the video description for the topics covered in today's episode. Okay, I think it's time for us to kick this off with a little bit of fun. First up, we're gonna have Frankie from Snake Oil Cocktails. Hi, how are you doing today? Welcome, welcome. Thank you to everybody out there in the BESA community for having us on board today and letting us present for you. Um, wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Frankie. I'm the director of mixology for Snake Oil Cocktail Company. We're a local beverage catering and design company. Uh, it's been in operation since 2010. Um, we do all sorts of different types of events. Um, anything you can think of, weddings, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, uh, corporate events, family events, um, anything you can think of where they need bar catering, we are there and we're bringing our creative mixology with us. Um, I'm talking to you right now from Julep Venue, which is the new venue that we opened last year. Uh, this is a great event hall, uh, very modern and airy, and we do all sorts of types of events here as well, and we can hold up to around 750 people all in. So that gives us a lot of opportunity and a lot of variety and a lot of breakout options. I'm standing right now inside Julep Cafe, where we hope to reopen here soon, uh, get back to offering the community good craft coffee and cocktails uh, with the afternoon in mind. Um, we're going today to make a delicious margarita variation. So the typical margarita, as most of you probably know it, is tequila with a little bit of lime juice, maybe some agave or triple sec or some type of sweetener. We're going to make our own variation, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, before we do that, we should talk that even though we're making a cocktail today, pretty much all of our cocktails, for the most part, can be made as mocktails as well. So when we get later on to the point where we're adding um, our spirit, you can consider whether or not you would prefer to just add a little club soda and still get some of the fun flavor nuances. Now, that makes us great for any event where, let's say, there's children or a younger set or perhaps people who just don't want to imbibe. It's a, it's a great opportunity to still showcase some fun mixology. Now, what we have here today is some ingredients that we're going to be using to make our spicy orange margarita. This margarita, as I mentioned, is a spin off of the original. And what I've done is I've added a little bit of orange juice rather than using a liqueur. It also kind of tapers off on some of the acidity from fresh lime, um, as well as I'm adding some spicy ingredients. If you're not a fan of spicy, I suggest just leaving out the chili ingredients and instead just going at it as a typical cocktail. Um, and perhaps that will work for you. So let's talk a little bit about, before we get into all of our ingredients, let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need on when it comes to tequila. Now, tequila is a wonderful spirit and you know right about now as summer's coming on is a perfect time to enjoy a good margarita there's different styles of tequila um, what i have here today are two different well-known houses i've got eradura for their silver tequila don julio reposado for a different style with a little oak age on it um, something to keep in mind when you're ordering tequilas is that there are highland and lowland tequilas typically a tequila that's from the highland region We'll have better drainage and more residual sugar, um, which will basically create a sweeter style of tequila. A lowland tequila, which tends to hold the water that comes off of the mountains, is going to have a little bit more vegetal and herbal notes. So you can kind of research that as you're picking your tequilas and decide what style works best for you. I've got two different tequilas here that we're going to be trying, or rather we could use in the cocktail. The first one that, as I mentioned, the Eridur Silver, the Eridura Silver spends little to no time in, in oak. So in this particular case, it can spend up to two months to be considered a silver tequila. This particular tequila does see a little bit of a barrel time. You can tell by the color. It's not just clear white. It has a little bit of essence of color to it. 
Um, most of the time, a silver tequila is going to be just simply blanco or white and probably won't have seen any barrel time aside from a little bit of resting. Speaking of resting, though, the reposado, which means rested in Spanish, is going to spend anywhere between two months and one year in an oak barrel. And usually it's an ex-bourbon cask, so you're going to often have some of those bourbon notes, uh, a little bit of vanilla and cinnamon and some of these things that you might get from the cask. Now, picking your tequila, these are well-known brands. There's a lot of new brands on the market. And there's a lot of brands that are possibly overpriced. Um, when picking a tequila, price is not always going to designate, but it's a great tequila. It usually will at least denote that it's a good tequila, but a lot of times marketing dollars and uh, fabricated stories about something's history somehow validate it to have a higher price point. But I say the best tequila is the one that you like the best. So don't be afraid to buy that cheaper tequila just because it's the one that you like. That's the important part. So I picked these two houses because they're well known and I think it makes sense for the cocktail that we're gonna make. Let's talk a little bit about our ingredients. So we do have um, a couple different things here. I have a little bit of a tahine salt. Now this is going to be tahine, which is a Mexican spice blend, usually citric acid, a little bit of salt, sugar, and, um, and chili. And often this is used just to eat on a little raw piece of jicama or watermelon as a fun, salty, spicy flavor. In this case, I'm going to do it on the rim. If you're trying to stay away from spice, just use a little kosher salt on the rim. Works perfectly. The next ingredient you'll see here is some cayenne chili flake. Now, what we're doing with our tequila in order to make this cocktail spicy is we're infusing it with cayenne chili. Well, the reason I use this as opposed to fresh peppers, the cayenne chili tends to leave um, a little bit more of a warmth on the back of the throat and not so much of a huge spice note on the front of the palate. Say when you're working with fresh jalapenos or habaneros, they can be a little tricky to figure out how spicy each pepper is going to be. When you're using the dried chili, you usually get a very consistent spice quality. Now, I've already infused our tequila, but what you would do is you would take about a tablespoon of this chili, put it into a liter of the tequila that you want to infuse, swirl it around a little bit, and dip your pinky into it a couple times and taste it. Once it hits that heat note you're looking for that you enjoy, I'd say within 20 seconds, you're gonna wanna go ahead and immediately strain out the chili flake. And then you can keep that bottle of tequila on a shelf, put it in a different bottle if you prefer, uh, and that way you'll always have that spicy tequila around. Super quick and easy to make with things you have at home. Some other ingredients I have, got some fresh lime and orange juice. Now, really with your citruses, if you have the ability to squeeze them ahead of time, you're gonna bring out some beautiful floral notes and lighten the acidity on your citruses in general. So some people will always create cocktails a la minute, but they tend to be a little over bright and acidic for my personal taste. The next thing we have is a little bit of agave nectar. Uh, you can substitute simple syrup in equal parts, but I think for an agave cocktail, the, the actual agave nectar, which is a byproduct of the tequila making process, makes perfect sense. A couple of other things we're gonna need, we've got our tools in place, and we've got a, a glass ready, and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started on making our cocktail. Now, first things first, we want to add a rim of salt to the glass. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. I usually take a little bit of citrus that, um, that I might have cut open while I'm squeezing my juices. And I'm going to go ahead and you can either do it along the whole rim or you could just do it on a wide swath of part of the rim. The reason I like to do this is it creates a little bit more salt for me to enjoy as you can see, but also I've got a clear side. So if I don't want salt with every sip, I can now actually go switch sides of the glasses and go back and forth and back and forth until I've uh, consumed my cocktail. So let's go ahead and get that started. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our cocktail tin. Now, if you don't have a tin at home, you can use a glass. Um, it can be any type of container. We're gonna use a shaking tin so we can shake, but you could always just stir this at home as well. So let's start off with our main ingredient, which is going to be tequila. I'm actually going to go ahead and make this with the reposado today because I really like some of those barrel notes that we were talking about earlier, and I think they're gonna really sing through the cocktail. Now this cocktail was with a margarita. You always wanna feel that kick and you always wanna taste the tequila. So I'm actually gonna use a full two ounces. 
if you're doing this at home and you don't have a jigger, you can actually go by tablespoons. A tablespoon is a half an ounce, so two ounces, four tablespoons. All right, so we've got the first piece. We've got our infused tequila. The next thing we're gonna do is add our fresh orange juice. With this ingredient, we're gonna add 1.5 ounces or essentially three tablespoons. And then next come kind of our acid and sweet. So when we're making a culinary cocktail, like a margarita or a smash or any of these things, we always wanna have a balance of citrus and sweet so that it kind of creates a salad, natural kind of salivatory reaction. So it's great with food this way. Um, let's go ahead and add our lime juice. We're just gonna do a half ounce or one tablespoon of lime juice. Okay. And last but not least, our agave nectar at equal parts. So we're gonna go with a half ounce of agave. All right. Anybody out there big tequila fans? Awesome, I hope so. so I hope this cocktail is going to end up in your repertoire because it's quite delicious. Now, we need to get our vessel ready. So let's go ahead and add ice to our glass. Then we're gonna add ice to our mixing tin or glass, whatever we are preparing this in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shake the cocktail. Um, if you're doing this at home without a shaker, just stir it, stir along. You're basically trying to create um, a few things when you shake or stir a cocktail. You're, at first you're mixing the cocktail, then we're chilling the cocktail, and we're also adding dilution so those concentrated flavors aren't so concentrated. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake. There's really no right or wrong way to shake. Um, main thing is we just wanna get a good comfortable motion and, and get mixing. We're gonna do this for about 13 seconds. Now, if I was making a super chilled martini, I'd probably go a little harder and stronger, but I'm really just trying to mix this and chill it and dilute it. So I'm gonna use my Hawthorne strainer and hold back the old ice and pour it over fresh ice. There we go, a perfect pour. Okay, the next piece of the game is garnish. You can't let a cocktail go out without a hat on, let's just say. Um, there's all sorts of different ways we could garnish this. I always like to use something that is elemental and representative of the cocktail and the ingredients in it. Um, in this case, I do like to keep around dried citrus for this very type of occasion. Uh, if you have a food dehydrator at home, you could do thinly striced citrus wheels, and they always make great garnishes uh, for last second cocktail. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just trying to find the perfect one here, and this one I'm liking a lot. So let's go ahead and pop that on top, and there we've got our spicy orange margarita. So I hope you'll get to try that and enjoy it. And I'd love to see if you come up with your own variations. Please feel free to share with me. And uh, thank you very much. We are Snake Oil Cocktail Company, and uh, we invite you to drink well. And we hope to see you here soon at Julep. Take care. Thank you so much, Frankie, for that inspirational margarita. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm like ready to like leave my seat right now and go make one because I have most of those ingredients in my house. This is like the best night ever. So <laughs> um, I love some of these tips that you gave us today. And so and just some of the mo more general things like the whole highland is sweeter and the lower you put that perfectly and that's gonna be a little bit more dry for people when they're looking for their tequilas. Um, I just have a random question. This is so gonna be so self-indulgent self here. I'm hearing agave, agave, agave all the time about when how the tequila is actually made. Is that really the marker of a better tequila? Is it's coming from agave? Is that make it real? Well, all tequila comes from agave in general. Mm -hmm. um, tequila in particular, in order to actually be a true tequila, it needs to be made with 100% of the Blue Weber agave, which is a particular type of agave. That's part of the protected laws, kind of like you have with wines and champ you know like champagne comes from a region tequila is essentially a region and it has its own laws so it's particularly the blue weber agave whereas with mescals and such you might be using uh, different varieties of agaves that may grow wild or just or have a different herbaceous or spicy notes or taste but tequila is meant to be a very unified flavor absolutely it's so like such a perfect drink right now 
and it's so on trend right now. So, um, and I also love the tip that you gave too about just adding one tablespoon of cayenne chili is gonna help out your bottle to make make get you the spicy margarita taste. Um, that was a pretty great tip that you had there. So, and you would say that overdoing like a fresh jalapeno. So it's just that fresh chilies are unpredictable. And so if you really want to have something that's consistent, that, that cayenne, I've been using it now for years and years, and it, it delivers a more of a warmth to the palate in the back of the throat rather than this intense spiciness on the tip of the tongue um, that you can sometimes get from too much of the capsicum qualities from different chilies. And some people will experiment and use things like habaneros and ghost peppers and, and possibly regret that <laughs> um, right away if they try to infuse a spirit with it because they may not be able to control it as much. I love this. So thank you so much. This is like some of the most, the, the best information. So um, just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about snake oil cocktail. And so, oh, yeah. so um, you guys are based here in San Diego. And so in your operations, um, tell us a little bit about what you guys do over there. Yeah. So we we recently opened up Julep Venue, which is a, a large scale venue um, with great breakout rooms and lots of different versatility options. Uh, we're able to host about 750 people there. Um, so we're really excited, obviously, for things to reopen here soon, and we can do all sorts of great events. We opened in October and we're able to host some great events before um, before the shutdown. But um, one of the positives is if if we have a lot of space. So if anybody has, wants to do a, a respons responsibly socially distanced event, we've got a lot of room for that, which is great. Um, so we also do offsite catering. Uh, we're running some programs right now that are called virtual bar stool where we can do basically team building uh, via cocktail classes that are done over the internet kind of like this kind of like the video you saw although a little bit more interactive uh, where we can sell kits that have bar tools and all sorts of ingredients so people can actually make these things um, as a group together for team building and uh, we're just starting also to bottle our mixes which um, is something that's been requested of us for many many moons and we have a marketplace now that's available um, on from our website uh, where you can actually order the cocktail mixes themselves and um, and come down to Julep and either pick them up or we're working on a delivery option. I love that so much. I've been seeing some of that actually come through oh. my email and that, you know, that you guys have everything's individually packaged and it looks really great. And it's such, such a nice, like a night out when you have to stay in, which is really what you guys are serving up there. So thanks. Uh, That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely loving that. So, um, and just seeing that also that you guys, so how are you guys also dealing with the shelter in place right now besides, so you guys are doing the drive up kind of options and doing um, drive through. Can you tell us a little bit more about that when you guys are partnering with some other Yeah, so there? we had been partnering with some caterers to do something we call drive through collective, um, which was basically uh, catered meals, um, like really good meals from caterers that were prepared to be reheated with that intent in mind. Um, and so they were par cooked or prepared. We had a couple of caterers and then we would have a, possibly a florist and then would uh, would also have a dessert uh, confectioner there as well as the ability to buy mixes and alcohol if you were interested and kind of have a one stop shop and be able to order most of it online uh, before picking up. I love that so much. And so it's just showing that you guys are kind of keeping ahead of the curve and you guys are thinking and you guys are actively you know, you guys are already dealing with the social distancing measures and that you guys already have the safety protocols in place. And so when everything does reopen here, you guys do have a leg up on a lot of people because you guys haven't stopped your operation. So yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely doing everything we can to remain uh, relevant and responsible. And uh, so far, it's been well accepted. It's so wonderful. I know that my experience with you guys over there at Snake Oil has been uh, pretty stellar. And so and I think too that Thanks. Now that we are going to be moving into this whole new section, we don't know if we're going to be allowed to have these larger scale events that um, somebody like a snake oil and something, you know, that you guys show that you guys can do the um, the cocktail graffiti. Mm -hmm. And so if you are having a small event, it just does make it so just a little bit more, you step it up a little bit. So since we are, you know, it's, it's about creating those little lasting, the value is now going to be a little bit different. I think when people look at booking their events. And so mm -hmm. I think you guys are offering a little bit more of that special touch. Thank you. And that's, that's always been our focus is really to offer beverage experiences rather than just be bartenders and make things memorable uh, for everyone that's in attendance. And that's, that's always been our focus. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Frankie, for joining us today. Yeah, so my pleasure, Daniel. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Snake Oil is such a wonderful partner to Bessa San Diego. So if you guys want to learn more about Snake Oil, you guys can go ahead and check out the bestasandiego.com website or just check for Snake Oil uh, on Instagram, Facebook, you guys will be able to find them. So my name is D'Angelo. I'm from Balada Entertainment. Thank you again. This has been another episode of MITS TV.